You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Parenthood After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Parenthood After Show. May God bless and keep you home. May your wishes all come true. May you always do for others what others do for you. Yeah, well, it just keeps saying it. This is awesome. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to AfterBuzz TV's Parenthood. We are here doing Season 5, Episode 18. We're all here tonight. Yay! Yay. It's awesome. been a while. It I'm has your, been. Yeah, it has been a while. Too I'm your host, Marissa Serafini. Tonight, I have all my three lovely co-hosts joining me. Introduce yourselves. I'm Danica Kennedy. I'm I, up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you go first, please. You got I'm Ace Before Beauty. I'm Elena Jordan. <laughs> and I'm Tiana Hobson. We have it together tonight, I swear. Yes, I'm so happy we're all back together. I missed you guys, all of us together. Okay, what were your overall thoughts, overall thoughts of this episode? It was kind of emotional. Tonight was the first time this season I've really teared up. Me too. Tearjerker. Yeah, tearjerker for sure. I cried. I knew it was coming because they had so many happy episodes. I was Mm -hmm. like, they're gonna they're gonna get us and it's just gonna be tears for forty five minutes. I feel like this episode wasn't extremely eventful, but in the things that did happen, it was a very emotional. Yes. I agree. It was very emotionally heavy, hard-hitting kind of episode. And the last three have been, like, kind of on the happier, lighter side. And I think that was just our way to getting back from the hiatus. But now it's just, like, right it's in. It's getting real now, hard. All drama. So, you know, let's just start with Drew and Natalie. Drew's wallowing. I'm, oh, okay, I'm over Natalie. <laughs> yeah. I don't what like do you her. Think? I yeah. used to like her, but now I don't anymore. Especially after she slept with his roommate. Yeah. Even toe. even in like worst case, even if Drew really was done with her, you still don't go sleep with his roommate because that's just rude and friendship one hundred and one. The you, way she it's was sloppy acting seconds too. And... She was acting like they didn't know each other when she yeah. was yelling and at then him. Yeah, like, he was your I slept with some roommate. random guy what? you happen to know. It's what like, does that no, even mean? You just happen to live with yeah. them. And That's it's yeah. the roommate that Drew does not like, and you know he does not gross. like him. He's gross. He's disgusting. And yeah, he's so disgusting. Why are you proud that you slept with him? Yeah. yeah. I would be disgusted in myself if I slept with that guy. She's getting a reaction out of Drew because she felt abandoned after he went to Amy. But get over it, Natalie. But it I just w- makes her look like, gross, though. Shush her face. I will give it to Natalie. She did point <laughs> out, again, that Drew's the one who dropped Natalie, dropped everything in the world because Amy came back into the picture. But how do you think... What do you think of Drew's behavior in tonight? He's wallowing. He's smoking weed. He's not going to classes. In the morning? In the, yeah, at 11.30 in the morning. I mean, who does that? But Shame on them. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Horrible But people. he's wallowing, singing sad music, singing sad songs on the, gu- on the guitar. What do you think of his behavior? He's going through a harsh breakup. I mean... You got to get through it somehow. Get I don't, over it. I don't think like it's good to miss that much you. school. But no. Yeah, exactly. Because now he's I mean, becoming missing out of every, every class it. except for the one that she, it's like, come on, man, go to class. Mm-hmm. Man up. It's a big school and a big campus. There's somewhere you can go and not run into Natalie. Even if you're in the same class as her, you don't have to sit next to her. You can leave before class is over to avoid her. You well, can walk not, ahead. She's stalking him. Well, I mean, yeah, but he did the same thing to her, so it's all fair. Yeah. But no, I, I agree. They're in college. You can sit on opposite <laughs> ends yeah. of the room, completely avoid eye, eye contact or any interaction with each other. It's just like, really, they're, Drew, you're just being a baby. Yeah, right yeah. Now. There's so many people who live in the dorms that you don't actually run into. You know, you can live in the dorms in, a, in the same building as someone and not see them for months at a time. And I just... why is he, like, getting all hung up on these basic boring bitches when he's <laughs> so oh, they're horrible. Like, I'm mm-hmm. single, he's Drew. So I'm right hot. here. 
Just a baby. We've already talked. Dana and okay. I have talked about this about how it's Too unacceptable young. for us to have a crush on Drew because it's he's a legal. teenager it's in fine. real life, and that's just weird. go with it. <laughs> But Amber's being the good good sister yeah. and, you know, trying to wake him up out of bed, trying to get him to class and whatnot. And then after Drew finally meant, like, he just doesn't want to deal with Berto and Natalie. And then she was like, uh, all the mother, the mother sister kind of thing. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't understand. Yes. Go back to wallowing. I didn't like that. Part. Yeah. I thought Her, she gave up way too easy on yeah. that. Yeah. In that aspect. You know, he is clearly going downwards right now and, you know, acting out. And I feel like we just went through this with Drew, you know, where he was getting over a girl. So you can't mm-hmm. always be getting over a girl, Drew. There has to be moments when you're just Pick over better it. girls. Yeah, pick better girls. But yeah. I thought Amber gave up way too fast on that one point, you know. Make he still it. needed to get his butt up and go to school and get out of your house and... I did like that her Sarah came out when she was ripping the blankets off. It made me think back to season one when Amber was in bed, like the first episode, and Sarah's doing the same thing. Yeah, But that just goes to show how much Amber has grown up as an adult, because she's finally on her own. That is her apartment, Mm -hmm. and just trying to get her brother to go back into the world. If he's going to wallow, though, better that it's at her place than at his place where Birdo is. With Birdo, and, you know, yeah. Birdo's oh. just gross and annoying anyways. Like, he just needs to move out and move in with Amber permanently. Well, he did move out in the, the last episode, right? I mean, yeah, are they officially, the, officially well, roommates? Well, that was the plan. Or just, like, temporary. Yeah, that was kind of, kind of I'm going to crash just your on apartment. the couch. No, okay. But no, I think he needs to get back in the dorms and man up. Mm-hmm. He does. It's not that serious. People in college date each other. They have one night stands with each other. They all move on. You run into that person. It's awkward. We get it. But you move past it and you get on with your life and you live your life. Don't go hiding at your sister's house. Yeah. I disapprove of Drew's decisions, but I do approve that it gives him more scenes with Amber. And I like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Me too. I love I like that they together. sang tonight. That was awesome. Okay. What did you think of that song? Because we know that... Sarah and Amber kind of sing on the guitar, but we haven't really seen Drew, and he's singing mm-hmm. some sad melodic songs. But he's actually the pretty he's really good. Singer. Yeah. It made him even hotter. <laughs> Calm down, Dana. <laughs> I'll stop. I'm getting pervy. <laughs> he's an emotional performer. Yeah, he is. He's singing no, off he's of really emotion. talented. I wish they had the long extended version of that song and put it on iTunes, like Parenthood. You know how yeah. Parenthood releases the album that they oh, had maybe a that full will song be on there. I hope, I hope so. so. Yeah. Uh, because I really liked that song that Mae Whitman did too. I want them to do a duet together. Wouldn't yeah. that be awesome? Like a full family band, duet. Yeah. Partridge Family, <laughs> Braverman. Well, Amber a did harmonize. Spinoff, and it's just, like them. They tour. That'd be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> Amber did harmonize in that song. <laughs> and you know what? They have the luncheonette. They have a recording studio. Yeah, just that's true. Go and make some awesome music. I mean, that would be fun. I would definitely listen and buy that on iTunes. <laughs> but also, speaking of which, you can download this awesome podcast on iTunes. Rate and comment. Subscribe. Tell a friend. That's how we grow here at AfterBuzz. We're currently up to 75 plus after shows here at Parent- wow. uh, at AfterBuzz. And we just keep growing. And Parenthood it just keeps getting amazing. And you know, another great thing you should also watch, Chasing Maria Menounos. Our lovely creator and executive producer here of AfterBuzz TV, Maria Menounos. She has her new reality show came out on Oxygen. It just aired March 18th this past Tuesday. But you should definitely take a listen and uh, see what this crazy show is about. Tuesdays on Oxygen. I'm Maria Menounos, and my life can get a little crazy. I host Extra. I'm an actor, producer, dancer, wrestler, and a lot of other things. I live with Kevin, my boyfriend of 15 years. Do you really love me? I would say that I'm in serious like. And my parents. Yep, I just said I live with my parents. You drive me crazy. You drive me crazy. My parents want us to get married. You both love each other. Get married. Kevin and I don't. I am going to get married when I want to get married. I think I want kids. Kevin definitely doesn't want them now. This is being pushed on to us. And of course, my parents wanted them yesterday. This year, you got to have it. And I have a house full of people counting on me for Financially. If I take my eye off the ball, everything can fall apart. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks or wants us to do. It's what we want to do. Everyone thinks that they know what's best for me, but I'm really the only one. I have got to figure things out. Chasing Maria Menounos is so new. Every Tuesday at 10, 9 central, starting March 18th, only on Oxygen. 
And we are back. You should definitely check out Chase and Maria Menounos. It's a fun, fun reality show. And you, you might see some familiar faces. Yeah. Just saying, just saying. I, don't know. What? I After mean, Buzz? definitely definitely support Kevin and Maria. They do so much for After Buzz. And that's why we're here, if it wasn't for them. And I, uh, you know what? Let's get into Sarah. Sarah just turned in her big project because at the beginning of the episode she's questioning oh i don't want to send this i'm so nervous and then hank you know just sends regular it. hank <laughs> sends it for her and then she's like oh okay it's official it's sent and now she's waiting a few days for the response but she's not hearing anything about it but what did you think of hank's um you know behavior towards sarah and like helping her along with her uh you know she kind of self-doubts herself, but how do you think Hank handled it? I I actually felt bad for Hank in this episode mm-hmm. because I, you could see that we all know that Hank has feelings for Sarah still and that Sarah wants to just be friends and you just see him kind of, without meaning to, Sarah strings him along and he being the nice guy that he is just, you know, kept taking it and taking it and there's a lot of blurred lines between them tonight, and I actually felt a little bit bad for him. I feel ba- the same way. I feel really bad for him, too. Mm-hmm. I thought she was going to cave this episode when he started massaging her. I was like, oh, what's going to happen? <laughs> like, was that? that was kind of <laughs> weird was when weird. he was like, he came up behind her and was like giving her that deep massage. I was like, oh, hey, are they going to like have sex? <laughs> or like, are they going to get back <laughs> together? Like, what's going to happen? And it was more of a, you know, they made a statement more like, hey, we're just friends. And he's like, I can't put up with this anymore. Like, I can't just be there for you all the time. And I think it's good that he actually spoke up and said that instead of being walked all over by mm-hmm. her all the time. Yeah. Because yeah. it's emotionally draining to be there for Sarah. Oh, yeah. She's she's very kind of codependent, emotionally codependent on mm-hmm. people. That she needs other people constantly in her life to reassure her that everything's going to be okay. She's going to be okay. Everything she does is good, you know, and just like every, she, she just needs that constant reassurance from other people to build her self-confidence because she's a very self-doubting person. Yeah. And especially Hank. Yeah. Especially Hank. And just last week, you know, Hank gave her the big pep talk about how, you know, she's too dependent on guys and here she is, you know, running off with another guy when she was going to go to Africa. Um, And I just feel like her depending on Hank in this way is the same thing. Mm -hmm. And she's still not, you know, living her life on her own. Like, she needs to get past the step of, you know, relying on another man. She's relying on a man in a different way this time, but she's still relying on something. She's giving up one bad habit for a different bad habit. And well, so I thought she he made a to... good point, too, when he was like, there's a braver man on every corner. Why do you keep coming to me? <laughs> like, like there's yeah, so Starbucks. many of you. Yeah. Braver men Starbucks. And I thought that was a good point. Like, she always goes to Hank. And even while he's finally telling her how he feels, she gets the message and immediately just shuts him off and is like, oh, back to me. Yes. Mm-hmm. She immediate, It was like she didn't even hear him Mm-mm. when he said, I can't do this for you. And then she gets the call. She's like, oh, what do you think? Is it good news? Is it bad news? You know, right, but right back to her. But then he continues to get strung along by her and he shows up at her interview and her meeting. And at first he like doesn't say anything reassuring. He's like, oh... I'll get drinks with you afterwards and we can cry together. Basically like, hey, you're not going to get this because it wasn't good. But then he saves himself right when she's going through the door and was like, look, you can don't cry in there. It's not even worth any tears because you're just, you know, so because talented work is and phenomenal. And finally yeah. said it. He finally said that. So and he said he was proud of her. That was sweet. Too. That was her I really face like too. Him. He was like, I'm proud of you no matter what happens. I was like, oh, Hank, I like you so much better. And I, I did save. I did love how Hank showed up to show that support, mm-hmm. genuine support for Sarah because, you know, everything that she's gone through and he has helped her along with this project, it was kind of like a win for both of them because the meeting apparently went well. Yeah. yeah. So Fun fact, the building she went in for the meeting is the same building from Britney Spears' music video, I Want to Go. Nice. Oh. <sighs> Mine was Studios mind. Hollywood. That's <laughs> awesome. You know, they I, just put a different sticker <laughs> on the window. That's <laughs> yeah, awesome. I noticed the, the building behind them when they were standing on the street said Hemlock Street, and they just reminded me of Hemlock Grove, another after show here that at Atticus, <laughs> that Tiana and I do just a little plug for that show. Um, but totally random, off subject. Okay. Plug away. But uh, I thought it was sweet. I think 
we didn't i mean it turned out well but i kind of want to see more of what they're going to do with this project now and like how it's going to affect sarah's now booming mm -hmm. starting to boom career so, yeah. i could see her drag along hank a little bit longer and then another man coming back into the picture and hank get heartbroken mm, and we will get yeah to addictions mm. but uh t speaking of other guys joel joel's having some serious problems this season man i mean okay now victor's at baseball practice and joel gets the wrong schedule mixed up goes to the wrong baseball field doesn't pick up victor he's uber late and victor's all there alone very worried thank god the coach was still there yeah. I mean, yeah. My first initial reaction was, oh my gosh, this has happened to me so many times. You know, parents just have a lot on their plate sometimes and, you know, get things mixed up. So I've had to, I've been the embarrassed kid who's been left on the field before. Aww. And so I was like, I don't really get why Victor's making it such a big deal. And then immediately I was like, oh my gosh, it's Victor mm -hmm. who's been abandoned before. His whole life. His whole life, whose new family is crashing and crumbling apart. Like, no, this kid is about like to have, like, the worst anxiety center. attack that any, like, 12-year-old should ever have. And he doesn't realize that that happens to most kids. Like, yeah. I mean, a lot that happens to a lot of kids where it's like, oops, I'm going to pick you up a few hours late, like, you know, work, mm -hmm. I forgot, whatever happened. But because he went through that, it's always going to be a million times worse. worse. And he's probably going to have problems and issues because of that through his whole life, you know, mm -hmm. because of the ab abandonment with like relationships and yeah. Well, going he on. he was definitely having that problem tonight because now that he got left once, he's afraid he's gonna get left again by Julia this time. Mm -hmm. And having Joel call Julia during school hours see if get that reassurance that he was gonna get picked up at the end of the day to the point where Joel buys Victor's cell phone. And Julia's not happy about it. Mm -mm. Well, Julia got kind of ringed by mom over there. I oh, did not appreciate those mothers. catty Gossip mothers. Mom. Catty mothers. I thought we all agreed we weren't going to get them cell phones until the sixth grade. Calm down, mommy mafia. What school? We what all class? agreed. What? Like, yeah, what all class gets together it's and it's like, hey, rule. as a team, we're not going to, as a parent team, we're, we're gonna not going to, you can't tell me when I can get my kid a cell phone. Right. Like, Okay. okay, so the first cell phone I got was because of things like what happened to Victor. It's mm -hmm. like I was doing so many different sports and stuff that sometimes my parents were like, just call us when you're ready, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So it was a phone just to, in case they didn't know where I was or, you know, I was at so many different practices, they knew how to get in touch with me. And I think that's harmless. And that's how Joel set it up, too. He said yeah. the only numbers are him, Julia, the grandparents. Mm -hmm. and but of course, Victor was going to be the teenager and get his friend's phone numbers and start texting. Yeah. And Julia's not happy because there's a miscommunication again between herself and Joel that Joel went out and did something without her knowledge and it affects the kids. And then Sydney's all upset. Yeah. And that Victor gets a cell phone. She doesn't. Well, I thought parents. it was interesting, too, because... Um, Joel brought up a good point that he called Julia, said, call me back when you get this, and she texted him back. Mm -hmm. And so Julia has been putting a lot of this miscommunication onto Joel not talking to her, but then she didn't But at the same time, back. if she texts like, hey, what's up? Because she sees she has a missed call. And instead of him saying, well, our son is freaking out, we need to do something about it. He clearly just didn't do anything. But at that point, I don't know. And, uh, and one hour later, was that long enough or short enough to get a cell phone to make that decision? Mm -hmm. I think parenting leave? wise, getting him a cell phone was a good idea. I, I, I mean, should have talked idea. to. I think he. I think it was a good decision, but I think he should have used his cell phone to call Julia and well, be like, he "Hey," did, and she didn't. She texted him back an hour later. Yeah. yeah, I I'm probably not would have the, done the, the same thing as Joel. Yeah. Like, I would have been like, Marissa and I were talking about this. Talk to we her. were trying to figure it out. So Victor was held back, and so now he's in the fifth grade? He's in yeah. the same grade as Sydney. Yeah. So they're in the fifth grade together. So technically, he was in the sixth grade just a couple months ago. So technically, <laughs> yeah, that's true. if they were waiting till the sixth grade to get a cell phone, Victor is of the appropriate age. These that's moms crazy. just need to back off. These moms need a life. Caddy mothers. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I get I it. Mean, your kid's complaining about they want a cell phone now, too. But, I mean, it's not 
my friends had credit cards and I wanted one. My mom still didn't go get me a credit card. Well, but, and in but, this day and age, too, that's not that young of an age to get a cell phone. I see, like, no. babies with cell phones now. It's yeah, ridiculous. It's sad. But, okay. But they're at a public school. I don't know what the... All schools are different, but the rules on have kids and cell phones. I mean, you're you're supposed to not have them in class and whatnot. Yeah. But I mean, I how mean, did the mothers even find out? I mean, was it after? Was it during school that? Well, if he got Victor it at was, lunch and Victor ran out, going, "Look at my phone! Look at my phone! Look <laughs> at my phone!" That's probably how. That's true. <laughs> I got but, my first okay. cell phone when I was like ten years old, and I was one of the first people in my class. But it made sense because. I my mom's a single mom and she had Mm -hmm. work late and I would have dance and stuff so I think it makes sense depending on the kid and the schedule I don't think it should be like every mom in the class has to get together and decide that we're buying our kids cell phones right now like that's not how life works I mean eventually the kids are gonna get cell phones no matter what I mean I think Victor is old enough and more mature enough to handle it but it's really the parents decision to get they're cell phone kids if they're gonna allow that but it should have been joel should have really communicated yeah. clearly with julia I think that's before the issue more than the phone it's just this is another example of them not communicating mm-hmm. and not speaking and the only time they do speak they fight and then get fed up and walk away yeah and then you know victor realizes that they're they're not happy about the cell phone and then goes to joel and be like Uh, Well, Sydney pointed out that you guys were happier together before I was even in the family. And what did you think of Joel's response? That was so... So good. Like, you didn't just come here to move in with us. You came here to be our son. And that's... I love that. that And no matter what, for forever, your mother and I will always love you. I wish he had said it in front of that brat, Sydney. Right. I don't like Sydney. <laughs> yeah. no. I'm like, don't get Sydney a cell phone. She'd be so annoying with her Instagrams and, you know, texting. Sydney would just Sydney's use it to like Google it. facts and act like she's smarter no, than all. she is to make people feel stupid. <laughs> um, hopefully Sydney gets out of this phase, this brat phase. Yeah. I mean, I feel being the... Well, and we mentioned it before, she was the only child for the longest time. She's used to having everything her way. Spoiled. Yes, very spoiled. But yeah. hopefully she grows out hopefully of it. Hopefully she grows out of it. Because, I mean, there was a while there when I really thought that she was coming around and, you know, loving Victor. And now her family is, you know, falling apart. And I get that. I understand that she's confused and angry and she has to point the blame at someone. But really... They need to sit down and like have another heart to heart with her mm-hmm. and let her know that it's not cool. He is your brother. This is not his fault. Mom and dad are having issues, you know, and I think that's part of the problem, too, with the communication is that not only are they not communicating with themselves between each other, they're not communicating with their kids or their mm-hmm. family. The way that scene was shot was so good, though, with them fighting, fighting at the dinner table and the music. Yeah, the audio, with the, the audio out. cutting out and seeing Victor just sit there with a big aggressive like her pulling Sydney and him just sitting not moving was so but it, sh- it shows just now they're at they're all at that yelling stage and they're all just they're communicating but not in the correct way mm-hmm. and it's affecting the whole family but hopefully they get their ish together yeah soon and because I it, it just breaks my heart to see them I mean they, they started off as such a happy family and I now know. they're all broken yeah and that's got to be hard but another thing that's hard tonight Max's story. Oh, oh my God. That's, that's where the I one that got crying. me. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. I lost it. Me. Okay, so Max has this field trip he's going to this river in Sacramento. And Christina and Adam, they're worried because this is the first time he's going to be alone with his on a big trip with school, like with his peers and whatnot. And Christina's not chaperoning, even though she was supposed to. And they were worried that something was going to happen. And something did. What did you think of how this all went down? Because it's really sad to see Max, who has Asperger's, people don't understand him, and then have this, and we soon find out that, you know, uh, away at his trip, the kids were bullying him, someone peed in his canteen. Mm. That's terrible. I I couldn't imagine what happened, like, Mm -mm. that ever happening to me, especially having Asperger's and just kids not understanding that. I can't understand the kids who peed in a canteen. And then told him it was because he was a freak. Yeah. And a weirdo. Even if he is, even if that's your opinion of him, what makes you want to, what makes you pee in the canteen for them to drink? You know, he clearly didn't do anything to you. 
So why that just shows like bullying how sick and horrible these kids are yeah. that he has to go to school with the the teachers clearly with the exception being Mr. Knight they don't know what to do with Max so they just keep sending him away the kids don't get him at all I mean Max is really you feel for him especially in this episode you see he really has nowhere to go and he feels isolated so how would you handle that situation I mean Mr. Knight seemed like he couldn't handle it either because he called the parents and be like something happened to the point where Max was having a tantrum, f- rightly so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they had to go get Max in. The fact that earlier when they were sending him off, that Christine and Adam, they're like, he needs independence. He needs to be on his own. And he's finally on his own and this happens to him. It was really sad to see Max regress back to that childlike state and it just sit on hurt. the floor not talking to anyone. Especially when Christina earlier in the episode is saying, you know, he's my little baby. And Adam's like, no, he's a teenager. You got to let him grow up. And then you see him where he's just, when the world attacks you and beats you down, you're always going to be your mom's little baby. We don't usually yeah. see him open up about it, though. Mm-hmm. We usually witness how he acts in front of, you know, his friends and his family, his tantrums. But we don't usually see him open up and say, why does everyone hate me? Why is everyone calling me a freak? In that scene, when they're in the car, oh. all three of those actors are amazing. Incredible. I got the chills. Incredible. And, um, he just like finally cracks because he won't tell them, you know, what the problem is, and then he just cracks and he's just you know starts explaining. And when Christina crawled into the back, and they oh, pulled away with God. that shot where it was just on Adam's face, like looking so upset so while driving, I was like. Okay, don't cry, don't cry. Like <laughs> I, that's it just got me. I still it was lost so it. amazing. No, that was really, really heart wrenching to watch. That they're it's such talented actors. They're all yeah. amazing, and you just I mean, feel Christina's pain too when she's wanting to comfort her son, and he's saying, "I don't like being hugged." And mm-hmm. she's like, I don't care. I'm here for you. I love you. And he's like, But I don't like being hugged. That was like so that's got to be so hard to have a kid who has Asperger's, and when you feel like. They're being attacked, and all you want to do is hug and embrace them. But you know, and when and you're they're being attacked, and you can't do anything. There's about nothing. It. Yeah, yeah, you it's just feel helpless. You can't stop the other people. Well, from what doing would that. you even do if I mean, you had a kid that you know their water bottle got peed into? I think it's like How even besides that, that school, it's bullying in general. It is bullying. That bullying I think that horrible, kid you know? should get expelled suspended. Something needs to happen with this Travis kid or whatever. And it was like you just thinking of it you know gets it's me mad it's infuriating but uh it was the max said something he's like asperger's is supposed to make me smart but i don't understand my people don't understand me and keep calling me weirdo and just having that hearing it from max point of view makes it even harder to even watch mm-hmm. and see all this go down because he is a smart kid mm-hmm. even though he he can pick up facts and stuff but he can't pick up social cues like that which is really tough to watch it's he doesn't just get be right. so it's frustrating. Mm-hmm. They're all laughing at him. Even the kid in the wheelchair is laughing at him. So yeah, yeah and he Micah. says everyone does, even the nice kids. And I'm like, no, the nice kids are not laughing. They're not your if they're friends. nice kids, yeah. they're not laughing. They're not your friends. None of them. And are. you know what? Screw them. But that's <laughs> I, why I seriously. think it's so awesome too that they're you know when Mr. Knight says I think yeah. next year is going to be a lot better. Like go Adam, go Christina, helping yeah. Max. You're helping all a whole bunch of kids who are in the same situation yeah and situations like this is what drives adam and christina to build this charter school yeah Mm -hmm. it's just more motivation power to them team brave i mean you're gonna all the way unfortunately he's gonna have to deal with the bully kids but until you know what those kids are no one they're not gonna turn up to like anyone important in five years from now trust me yep as, as the saying goes, haters are my motivators. And so exactly. Max just has a bunch of haters right now. And they should just motivate him to, you know, live his life, do his photography. They become can buy successful. his National Geographic that he has the cover of. Yeah. A bug yeah. on the front. Exactly. <laughs> Ten years from now, Max yes. is going to be the successful one. And everyone else is by the wayside. They don't matter. Hashtag hate is going to hate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, all right. So... Yes, um, we'll wrap that up with uh, Camille and Zeke. The offer, what this episode is actually called. So now this Karen lady, she's back, and someone wants to take a look at the house, gets a tour, doesn't, he seems very dismissive, this guy. I don't, 
what, what was Mr. Spencer. Um, yeah, Mr. Spencer. He takes the tour, seems very dismissive, but he actually comes back with a very nice offer, which is l at first less than their asking price for the house, but it's all cash, all up front, very quick. You can close it, call it done, call it a day. And, but so, okay. What do you think of Camille? She seems like she's kind of wishy-washy now. She's questioning everything. I think it's having Crosby and the family there. I know that initially she was upset with Crosby bringing it to her attention that Zeke didn't want to sell the house. But I think seeing them around and then especially, you know, last week um, at the christening um, or the baptism ceremony, the dinner beforehand and having all that family around and realizing that without this place, we don't have anywhere where we all can just come together and be a family and love each other and fight and all the memories that are in the house. I think that's starting to get to her a little bit and make her a little bit more hesitant, which I'm I'm okay with that. And the sentimental memories that go along with the house. They're mm -hmm. sitting mm -hmm. out there by the fire. Like we've enjoyed this for 44 years now. That's, that's a really so long time, long time to live in a house. house. I love that time. scene with Zeke and Camille by the fire pit, though, and that was sweet. him finally admitting that he cut down the oak tree just because he wanted to build the barn that Mr. Spencer called a shed. Shed. So yeah. I, 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 shed. I really wanted the oak tree story to go further because mm -hmm. he pointed out that the banister, because Mr. Spencer was like, yeah. what's this wood made out of? And he said, oak, and I built it myself. So when he's like, what happened to the oak tree? He was like, oh my gosh, he, he chopped it down and he made the banister out of the tree that was there. And that's why this house has to stay in the family. But yeah. then they didn't take it there. So I was no, kind of But sad. that was Aww. a really good, <laughs> you did though. That was a I really did. good pickup on that's your part, though. Tiana, because I didn't even put didn't, two and yeah. two together. Well, I was like, so. why are they mentioning that that's oak? Like, it makes no sense mm -hmm. for that. And then an oak tree. And... But I think leave it to the audience to, yeah, to pick that, that up together. like you did, T. Or Writers, your clever after buzz so host. Smart. I'm still and here every Writers, week. we're here. <laughs> so smart. But, all right, so Camille's questioning it. and But I love how Zeke is being now truly the supportive husband because it was Camille's decision in the first place to sell it. And now they finally had the option to sell it and now she's questioning it and then zeke's like whatever makes you happy he's not arguing with her i want so. what you want but yeah. he's also taking the easy way out <laughs> like couldn't it be said that by saying oh whatever you want to do that's like well, what do you want for dinner tonight he doesn't i don't care want, he your didn't choice want to sell the house from the get-go she knows that she knows that this is like pretty much the balls in her court but she also knows that he's supposed, like he supposedly has come to the fact that I, if this is what you really want, we're gonna do this. We're in it together. And now he's going back and being like, "Oh well, no, I want to do whatever you want to do." Yeah, it, it, kind of. It's smart not to argue yeah. and start mm -hmm. a fight. But it's funny now in this episode that she, Camille points out all the things that originally made her unhappy: the fact that Zeke got a car, which was a year-long project, mm -hmm. but now it became a thing with Victor. And it would break Victor's heart if they couldn't finish it. Mm -hmm. And now uh, Crosby's back in the house. And she was kind of, you know, not okay with it at first. But it, it also helps her question this decision again. And, and I think it's just like once you make this big deci life decision and then it finally presents itself to you. Like, were you really serious? Were you really planning on doing it? Or like actually going through with it and executing the whole thing? Yeah. If I, I were... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think it's just finally starting to get real for her. Yeah. Because she even says, I want to wait the three to four months like we planned. And I think she's thinking three to four months is a long amount of time. But the closer it gets, I think she's mm -hmm. just going to be more like, this is my life. Why am I doing this? I Question. hope anyway. Yeah. I think that um, if I were them, I wouldn't have taken the first offer. Mm -mm. Because yeah. it was below asking and you're not even on the market yet hello that means that when it goes on the market you're gonna get a bidding war over that land yeah. and that property so but i thought they, they were smart not to take the first offer even good. their feelings aside of if they were going to change their mind or not don't take that first offer nope and i think they should hold on to it and keep the house and then when they get really old they can go to like a nursing home and then hand it down to someone else in the family and it could be like the family home that like everyone takes care of 
Who instead you- of just selling it to some random people yeah. that want to gut out the kitchen and make it all modern and stuff. That doesn't mm-hmm. go with the house at all. No. It has so much history and And now Cam- Camille's making a point like, oh, we didn't do this and this and this to the house. Mm-hmm. Like, now, just more reasons to hang on to it, which I think. Okay. If they did give, like, pass the house on to one of their children, who do you think they would give it to? That would be the thing is, well, I think Sarah would be the one who would need it the most because she doesn't have a, she's the only one who doesn't actually have a house, but she's got a nice little apartment. Crosby and Jasmine. Crosby. They're staying How there. bad is their mold that they've been there yeah. for that <laughs> long? I'm like, what kind of like well, demon toxic be. alien mold has infested your home? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. That too. you have they to like move in moved for in. like six months. Like, what is happening? Yeah, that's pretty bad. I think that they would <laughs> skip their kids and maybe give it to a grandchild. That's true. Because, you know, at this point, Not their kids Sydney. are pretty, their kids are grown up. Yeah, you know, their kids are grown up. So maybe, like, Amber and Ryan are, sorry, whoa. Oh. Amber and oh. Oh. <laughs> Way to bring us down even more, oh. team. Yeah. Like, tonight oh. wasn't rough enough. Just, bring up old wounds. <laughs> I'm just so used to looping their names together, <laughs> you know? Amber and so Drew. So was she could move in there together, you know, once Drew's done that with college cool. and, you know, kind of as a starter place. Could even get Hattie up in there, you know. She comes home from school, make it like a cousin's house to kind of start <laughs> off the in. twist. It all goes to Hattie. And she's all like, I've Hattie. been waiting. <laughs> I think it'd be what fun just to, to see which, which child they decide to give it to. But, okay, so... Uh, the the guy Miss Mister Spencer comes back with another offer, even better, cash again, but more than their asking price, which is shows kind of some desperation. But Camille is still questioning it. Should they take it? Should they not? They have three days to figure three it out. Days. Three days. That's, That's it. not a long time. No. I want. Do you think they're gonna ask their kids? Are they gonna just kind of let themselves? I think she's this? gonna. They're gonna have to talk to Crosby, especially if it's like, "Hey, we're gonna sell in well, yeah. three days. You guys have nowhere to go except for your crazy mold house." <laughs> well, the thing is, all the kids know now, but we haven't really seen anyone else other than Crosby really bring like fight with the parents about it. Really, Crosby's the only one technically fighting over it. Everybody else has their own mm-hmm. issues right now, yeah, though. That's true. Crosby and Jasmine are just kind of chilling. Their only issue is that they don't have a house, so... Oh, I don't know. And that's how we end the episode. We don't know what, they what gonna they're going to decide. May probably hold on to it, put it I on don't the think market. I they're going to sell it. I, I hope so. they don't. I don't think so. They're all tough. It's the Braverman mothership. They can't let it go. I don't think they're going to sell it. No. No. I mean, it's a character in and of itself. Yeah. But uh, that's how we ended the episode. Anything else we want to talk about we missed? No, I think that's everything. All right, then. You know what? Let's go with some some news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. All right, lots of things actually happened in the Parenthood community this past week. We do have photos, but before we get to that, um, BuzzFeed, I love BuzzFeed. I mean, they have so many things. They have a quiz. (laughs) <laughs> Which Braverman are you? And I took it. I got Sarah Braverman. I <laughs> took it so too. Funny. I got um, Monica Potter. What Christina? Christina. Christina. I'm like, what's her name? <laughs> Which is funny because you kind of look like Christina with the, the short, short, short mom hair. haircut. <laughs> I got Drew. I don't look like Drew, but, no. but Drew's awesome. Him. But Drew is awesome. And no one sent me the quiz before the show, so I didn't take it. <laughs> so but I don't know who I am. Who Drew's do you Zeke. think you definitely. would be? I'd probably be Sarah. <laughs> you get Sydney and you're like, no! I can picture you as Sarah or an Amber. I wanted to be yeah. Amber. I, I was disappointed when Amber, I was an Amber. I, I was like, oh man. But apparently, I just want to be Amber in real life. Yeah. But Me too. my results, because the, the quiz asks you like your favorite food, what m- music you listen to, what kind of house you live in, like stuff you do on the weekend. Just like your personality kind of test, and I got Sarah, which means I'm like, I am. Um, you're well, a wild card. I'm a wild card, which I find very interesting. I was like, I don't think I'm very impulsive, but sometimes I can be. But uh, and yep, yeah, but that makes me fun. Impulsivity uh, has led to many different paths, which I do agree. This is just Sarah's Braverman's. I mean, I highly suggest you go on BuzzFeed, take this quiz if you love the Braverman, see which one you are. It's very fun. And then an- another thing, um, 
uh, th there was another article uh, say, saying that Parenthood is one of the manliest shows. Um, and, and not for the reasons you're thinking, but actually, <laughs> they do a great job of showing the men being real guys in this episode because we see all the all the lead strong. They're all strong men, and they get emotional at some points, but not in the in, in a bad way. But it's showing men with true real emotions. That's true. I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. They don't really objectify anybody in the show, which I really like. Yeah. Keep it real. Yeah. Yeah, and also BuzzFeed had another just fun little thing, 34 reasons why Amber and Drew are the best <laughs> brother and sister. I thought it was really cute. It just like, it's a bunch of just saying like all their best moments together. Definitely check it out. And uh, um, also we have some fun photos and we'll get to that as Sam, Sam Yeager. He posted on Twitter uh, a couple days ago, uh, March 12th. It's him in Arsenio Hall. He says, tonight on Arsenio Hall, it just got real. <laughs> I watched that him. interview. It was really fun. No, oh. I didn't watch it. Uh, what, what did it consist of? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, Arsenio I, Hall comes on very late at night, Good guys. story. <laughs> cool story, <laughs> bro. I just remember watching and be like, oh my gosh, like Sam, that's awesome. I should remember this for the show. And then I fell asleep, but... <laughs> All right, but well, he was then. really fun on there. I do remember laughing at his you jokes. You can confirm it exists. <laughs> it exists. <laughs> he was it there. It is real life. <laughs> All right. So check out Sam on our senior hall. And then he also tweeted out, last day on set for me this Aww. season. So blessed to work with such amazing people. And it's just a photo collage of all the family members. The picture in the upper right of uh, Zeke and Crosby is in every house at least twice. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every yeah, single one. And that's not even a real field. Yeah. They're in front of a cyclorama. It's just a painted backdrop. But they're just... I feel like that was just in between takes. They were just goofing off. And it's in all the houses. They well, have the same pictures over and over again over and in all over. of them. Well, those are the promo pics of the season one when they first started Parenthood. Mm -hmm. so, but I love how they keep using that over. It just like shows that. they're one big happy family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even if they are in front of a cyclorama. <laughs> <laughs> Another one, Sam tweeted out Aww. Zeke and his boys making a scene. It's just behind the scenes, just the, the Brave Women boys, you know, just being there on set, which I love. And then also Lauren Graham tweeted out, she was on Ellen today, <gasps> and today she tweeted out um, her book Someday, Someday Maybe is finally available on paper, nice. um, paperback. paperback. And uh, I checked out the Ellen interview today. Yeah, she did. <laughs> and Okay, I love Lauren Graham on Ellen. I think I'm pretty sure Lauren Graham has set the record for the most appearances on Ellen's DeGeneres' show. And actually, Lauren Graham was the very first guest Ellen ever had. So yeah, it makes sense. I mean, and I, I'm pretty sure I've seen every appearance of Lauren Graham on Ellen. All I know is I was in the other room and all I heard was Marissa cracking <laughs> up the so entire I'm time. Watch that now. So <laughs> funny. I mean, I love it every time she's on Ellen. As she talked about her father was there, you know, retiring and then um, just being Irish and celebrating St. Patrick's Day with her boyfriend, who is Peter Krause, who plays, of course, Adam. And then just like fun, fun things. And she was promoting her. Uh, her new book on paperback, and also a, a fun anecdote that Ellen sent her a check for one cent <laughs> for some odd random reason. It's a really, really funny interview. Go check it out. <laughs> it aired on Ellen Today, March 20th, so I'm sure it's up now available online. Check it out. Really funny. And then another photo she tweeted, uh, check out my dad looking classy on the Ellen Aww. Show. <laughs> and her dad actually got to speak of it, and she made a joke. She was like, yeah, I always love bringing my dad and stealing my spotlight on <laughs> Ellen. <laughs> my thunder Re really funny and then uh yeah just my results on the um sarah braverman uh quiz i had a fun really piece fun. of news sure go congrats for it. to john corbett who plays seth on his new fx comedy pilot with dennis leary sex and drugs and rock and roll oh. Oh. he's gonna play um flash the lead guitarist of the heathens this band that dennis leary is gonna play johnny rock and it's gonna be about this band, the behind the scenes. Very cool. I'm excited to see when, it. When does that air? Um, it just got air. picked up for a pilot on FX, so they just officially confirmed that it even exists. So. Oh, cool. Well, good that for him. But yay for, for John. Yay. So, um, 
So maybe that means no more Seth appearances. Maybe he'll make a cameo. But you know, speaking of cameos, let's get to predictions. Yeah. And now your After Buzz TV predictions. So we know Mark comes back. Yeah. My favorite. Jason Ritter makes another cameo in next week's episode. But Hank and Sarah are kind of getting buddy buddy again. But of course, Mark is going to come back into the picture and make Sarah question everything. How do you think that's going to go down? Honestly, I don't want Sarah to. I love Mark, but I don't I think I don't think Sarah deserves Mark. I don't think Sarah Ooh. should be with Mark or Hank. Yeah, or Hank. Ouch. I love Mark. I'm just being real. No, it's true. <laughs> I want Sarah to be with Mark just because I want to see more of Mark. Yeah, I want to see him more, but I don't think that she deserves him i don't think she deserves him anymore either just the way that she so abruptly ended their relationship and she went for hank and then mark is hank is still there mark is back i hope they have a scene together mark and hank yeah that would be fun to see they they probably will time. have a scene together. Especially because how do you react when you know your fiance breaks up with you immediately starts dating another guy if she had gone on and hit a home run with Hank, sure, be happy for him. It was meant to be. But the fact that they aren't together now, it's kind of like, dude, mm-hmm. you stole her from me and then you couldn't even keep her? Yeah. yeah. I'd be a little upset. I'd be like, oh, man, wasn't yeah. even worth it. Yep, yep. And and then also, we're still on the house. We don't know if they're going to sell it or not. Who knows? Joel on a date in that preview, though. <gasps> what? what? And I, he looks happy. No, I'm not okay with it. Not okay it looked with it at like all. that was a setup. Because that was that, um, what's her name? The this Pete, is boss. Pete. 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 The one name oh, yeah. lady. Yeah. Pete. Pete. I, I think, think it was set it was up Pete. to look more like a date than like a business it's dinner. More, where like, you know, an accidental hand, hand, hand. It or didn't something. look accidental. That wasn't hey, accidental. Hey, hey, hey. Editing skills, guys. But they've These always are promos. Had a weird They're meant to make you think one day. Like Drew accidentally lived with Birdo. I'm like, that's nonsense words. You can't say this. Uh, <laughs> and they always but, have like weird meetings. It's like, oh, we're gonna go here to discuss this, and it's like, why are you so classy at this nice restaurant having drinks as a meeting? They have fancy yeah, dinner dates. Which a little bit weird. Might get more fancy. And I'm like, you work in construction. Calm it down. Get a burger. Like, <laughs> I think Joel's just as hey, guilty as Julia make good with money. flirting. Yeah, yeah, but do you really need to go to a nice, fine dining restaurant? Maybe yes. Pete's classy. Pete's a That's classy what she lady. Likes. She likes. Be classy by yourself, Pete. But, you know, I, I think, I mean, we didn't really see... Um, anything about the charter school but hopefully they touch more upon that in the future episodes and i think with speaking of schools drew you know dropping out all those classes or just skipping classes that's really going to affect his grade i wonder if he's going to like fail and might drop out of school maybe i can see him him taking him out of school I could see him being on academic probation or something and the whole family kind of being like, Drew, what's going on with you? Because you're such a good student. Get your life but, together. Yeah, get these girls out of your life. Basically, stop tripping over these hoes and, and get your life together. It. They're not worth it. Uh, but yeah, other than that, <laughs> who that knows note. what's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? <laughs> on that note. <laughs> to keep this conversation going, where can we all find you, Tiana? You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at the Tiana Hobson. You can find me on Twitter at Elena Jordan. And if you're in Los Angeles, catch me at the Comedy Store this Saturday at 7.30. And you can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at Danica Kennedy. And you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Sarah Queen TV. You can follow all of us here at AfterBuzz on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at AfterBuzz TV. Definitely check out Chase and Maria Menunos, her awesome reality show. Thank you, Phil, for engineering. And we will see you all next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you. 
Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.